Well, hey there team, welcome back to the channel and welcome to City of Gangsters. So we're looking at this today specifically because the Atlantic City DLC just came out and the developers have been good sports. They've set me up with uh, with this game to have a look at. I missed it at release and funnily enough, I've actually been playing a fair bit of it the past few days to get my head around it. This is a game that's a bit more of a longer burn. You've got to know what you're getting into and also, not that it's falsely advertised, but I wonder if some people don't truly understand what they're getting into here, right? This is very much a logistics management game, first and foremost. There is gangstering and, and rudimentary combat, or, you know, playing over territory and that. But actually, I quite like it, but that's because I've, be I've become a bit more of a transport logistics nut in recent years. If that sort of stuff makes you roll your eyes and yawn, then don't play this, trust me. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not trying to drive people away from the game, I'm just trying to give a bit of an accurate representation. So, I'm a, I'm a bit of a rookie, but I I really enjoy this, actually. I've been playing it, faults and all. It's it, it can be arguably tedious from one angle, but from my angle, I find a bit of catharsis, actually, in the sort of micromanaging. So I'll walk you through about a bit of it. Uh, Atlantic City, as best as I can understand, is essentially just an extra map, right? You've got your defaults here. Oh, wow, custom map. I haven't really tried that. I've stuck with Chicago. Um, Detroit, I wanted to live past three turns and not get shot in the middle of the street, so we won't play Detroit. Um, but Atlantic City leverages a lot more of the gambling, which is added in with that as well. So it's not just a new map to play on, but um, sort of new business avenues as well. Let's get in there. Um, now, I'm actually a huge gangster 1920s fan, you know, I love the Untouchables, I grew up watching that, and uh, I played Gangster's Organized Crime, which is a well old game. Um, it's probably horrible if you go back to it now. Uh, but this actually scratches an itch that I didn't realize I kind of had, to be honest. Um, okay, so you can just sort of pick your nationality, I guess. I, I could be Caribbean, uh, Austrian, English, German. Let's be German. And then you bang random. I notice that randomized doesn't random that, but it randoms male and for male. Um, Harold Hartman of the Hartman Outfit. He's tough. The organizing crop. Yeah, cool. Very good. Har Harry sounds like the man to be. So it's going to generate this map. Um, and the, the thing about this is you are an early 20s, you know, 10 bucks to your name kind of... Uh, the American dream, right? And you you start off just going around door to door in your little car, selling hooch out of the back of your car, right? And then you get to a point where maybe you can afford a car and hire on one person, get a bit of extortion going. And then you set up your logistics chain, which is incredibly robust, right? It's very much um, a lot of drop downs. Uh, it's not quite if then sort of stuff like statements, but the idea is that you add a lot of um, pick this up and take this to there, drop this off here, now move over there and buy this with this money, drop the money off there, and you create this this huge route and then you stick a dude in a car and tell him to do it, and it's actually really satisfying when you get to that. Um, we won't worry about all this fluff, 20 years old, let's go. Um, how wonderful is this huge city? Uh, so it's got this low poly look to it. Um, and you start here, and the blue is your territory that you can faintly see, and they have this corner theory, which I think is very, very much in line with the sort of gangster mythos, right? Um, or, or lore, I suppose you could say. Uh, I, I quite like all this, this low poly stuff. At first, it was jarring, I'll admit that. But um, what you can do is you can pick your car and you can drive down to these different, they, they call them corners, even though that's clearly not a corner. But these all these houses will be associated with, it's almost board gamey in its grid-like uh, reference. Anyway, so this blue one is where we start, right? And we'll have probably a family member as the person here. This is my uncle, I thought it said, right? And um, uniquely, uh, he has a front that generates, it looks like, apple juice, right? And uh, and this is sort of what's in stock here. And this is my car because I'm at this location. I've got a hundred bucks and a baseball bat, you know, the young man's dream. But you do start with some booze ready to go, and this is how you get going. And what you need to do is save up to get your first operation going, um, which is probably going to be... It depends on uh, you, the skills that you start with, but it's probably going to be cider, right? If he's if he's already making apple juice, I think the game helps you out a little bit. So we're probably going to need 800 bucks in capital. You can see we've only got 150, so that's, that's going to be a little bit of legwork to do, right? So what we'll probably do as a, as a course of action is we'll line, uh, we'll shift click uh, the homemade beer and we'll get the apple juice. No, no, we won't get the apple juice, sorry. We'll get the brick wine 
and we'll I'll take the last of the money as well and we'll take some hard cider because your car has a capacity brick wine hard cider and homemade beer and what I'll do really quickly before I forget and these are shortcuts you figure out I will say the tutorial is long and it's dry arguably you could from one angle it's a good tutorial it covers everything but it's it's like work right it's not delivered super well but I got through it uh, so it just heads up when you do learn this game if you press Z you can pull up these overlays here. You got different ones here, but the first one is interesting because we've got, what was it? Brick wine, hard cider, and homemade beer. And I'll click the favorite button. And so now if I toggle Z on and off, it will change to an overlay, which shows us known contacts that will basically buy this gear. So you can see I can sell the homemade beer to these shops over here. So that's our first sort of course of action. Oh, what to get into here. That little door means we can build uh, a setup here uniquely. That little hand thing is actually really helpful. What that means, you'll start to memorize these symbols, is that if I talk to my contact here, he'll have a favor, this red ticket means that I've earned a favor with him by being friendly. So there's a lot of like going around handshaking, introducing yourself to the neighborhood, that, that sort of gang relations of being a man of the people very much. Um, so basically you can leverage uh, a favor for all sorts of different things. Um, in this particular case, you know anyone that's buying or, or selling what I need, right? So this is particularly helpful. He'll tell you about his friend Clyde, all right? So we're gonna go, yes, there you go, I'll trade in the favor. And you can see that Clyde over here at the paint store, who also knows people that are interested, if we press Z, you can see he's also buying beer too. So that's one of the things, you keep an eye out for this symbol specifically at the beginning to try and get an idea of who's buying what because they can only buy so much so you need more customers to get the ball rolling anyway um expanding territory is super obtuse in the beginning um you can set up a front and the front can then go out into the community it's like you give them 10 bucks a month or something and they go out to sports halls and talk you up and that's sort of you know the, the world building way of spreading territory you could go to uh, like this corner here that's not my territory and i could actually just pay straight up to turn that into a front but it's going to cost me hundreds of dollars so buying outside of your territory very expensive making a, a one inside your territory usually just costs you a favor so let's go because they're green, you can see they're associated with my corner. I think there's a way to pull up, I'm not 100% sure, controlled buildings maybe? No, no, no. But there might be one that uh, shows you zoning. Might be the third one. Here you go, fronts and territory. That's my territory. It'll be in here. Yeah, yeah, so... Um, oh God, I can't, I can't really see it. So there's, a, there's a lot of information here, but you'll get used to it. Essentially, if I move out of this square, they won't be green. I'll go gray. Because they're green, they're part of my, my corner. All right. Anyway, let's go to this ice cream shop. Talk to Victor, who kind of likes me a little bit. All right. Um, I'm going to talk to him about a favor. And here we go. Our outfit wants to expand our territory. We already control this corner, but we'd like to expand beyond it. I want you to run a front for us. So you talk to him about that. Got a lot of flavor text in here, essentially. And he's like, oh, what's involved in that? It's like, oh, bro, welcome to the criminal underworld. You got it. And what's second, blah, 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 blah. You can read it, whatever. Uh, we're more just trying to showcase the game. I, Even though I blah, blah this, this wall of text, it's kind of cool. I quite like reading it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the writing. It's just there's only so much we can cover in one video. Um, anyway, I know exactly what you mean. I'll take care of it, right? So then we trade in our favor. And there we go. So essentially this dude will now run collections, right? Um, if we have an extortion racket going, but most importantly, now that we have a front established, um, we want to press this thing here to talk to him about expanding our territory. And if you give him 15 bucks, now I can't, I don't have any action points left. I'm out of action points. So I haven't even moved. Um, then we'll be able to do that. Anyway, that's fine. Um, if you press next turn or space bar, It'll simulate all the other dudes going around. Look at that, we learn about apples. Lucky me. Let's go and continue our conversation with old bloody Victor. Um, we've already, actually, we already had that action. How's the front doing? Let's talk about the locals. I want to expand, and here you go. He'll come up with an idea. And they're all interesting, actually. If you want, I can pay them a bit. Uh, was, I have an idea for the next block over. Pay them a bit every month to remind the locals what might need uh, your protection. Break a window, some minor mischief. I'd make sure no one knows uh, they work for us, right? So he's gonna 
be mischievous for 15 bucks. So you bankroll him. $15 isn't a small amount of money in this game. And we just leave him to it, right? You can see we've got the little pop-up warning here. Your front's working and increasing your reputation. And this is how you get new corners in. This is the sensible way to do it. You can get boxed in by other gangs, like these are minor gangs. These, these are sort of like city-states from Civ, like a, one dude in his one corner. But you can get boxed in. In fact, look where we are up against the river. Our, our avenue for expansion could close off pretty quickly. So... Um, if you do get into that situation, I could go over here and set up a front, for example, but you pay the premium. Uh, this is the way to do it. You make a front in your territory and you expand out. Now, you should probably also be extorting just about everything else that's that's in your territory. So we're going over to, what's this, bloody one, one eater's Meats. Now, 28, that's not bad. I must have a crate. Oh, she has the trait, Curious, and 20. From my trial and error, as long as you've got more than 20 happiness with them, extorting them is pretty much a, a done deal. So we're going to come here. I've got great news. We've taken control of the corner. Things are going to be better around here. Glad to hear someone's taken charge. It's good of you to say. We should make things better. Be an honor to assist. Demand payment. 20 bucks a month or whatever, right? That's extortion. I guess I have no choice. She's not super happy with it, right? They're never going to be happy with it. But I find that um, they don't say no if they're above 20. Uh, maybe I'm. Maybe it's, there's a 1% chance, I don't know, because it did say a dice roll, but I wouldn't do it to someone that was already at eight, for example. You go around and then you leverage favors to put in a good word with people from mutual connections. But in this particular case, we've extorted her fairly successfully. Um, so that's cool. So that's our territory. We've got our front, they're expanding. We've extorted the one business that's in here. Right, now we want to basically make money. Press Z for our overlay. Actually, one thing we will do real quick is head out to this paint store because they know of people that want to buy as well. And while we're here, we'll click on these. Oh, we don't have action points, so we'll just skip. But we'll click on the question mark and we'll find out what these businesses are, right? And you can interact with them. You know, you can go in there, but zero. She doesn't bloody know me. She doesn't care. I'm out of action points. God, I've got like no action points. But she probably doesn't really sell much but maybe she would be interested in black market stuff and then what you can do is go here go to mutual connections which we have none right but i don't know maybe if we went to click on our uncle all right there we go look at this we've got a whole bunch of mutual connections right and then you could leverage it and say put in a good word with me with the favor system there's a lot of sort of like i said a lot of handshaking um we need an action point so we'll just skip um here you go, do, do, do you know someone that's buying or selling what I want, right? Yep, cool, tell me more. Look at this, it's Virginia's Meats or whatever it was. Okay, cool, see you around. See, uh, yeah, so if we press Z, there you go, you can see they wanna buy brick wine, which is nice. But while we're here, I think if you hold shift and click, it goes straight to the buy option. This dude wants to, he wants a homemade beer, basically. I might have some in my car right now. You can you can try and do an exclusivity thing if you're up against an enemy's border, which is, it's okay. You, you have to pay a premium. I'd have to pay this bloke like a hundred bucks or something so that he wouldn't deal with the other opposition, but that's more when you're clashing on territory lines. And the inflating the cost is a temporary thing that will mess with the... Uh, with your friendship. In fact, you could sell at a discount if you wanted to sort of buy up the dude's friendship. But for the moment, I'm not that worried. So we're just gonna go sell beer. I've got some in the car. We're gonna shift click here. He'll buy up to 25, but I've only got 15 because that's just part of my starter amount. Um, that was uh, the homemade beer though. We'll take that off our favorites because we're not gonna be producing that. And let's just go here, shift click out of action points. Now, eventually we're gonna level up and then we can get more action points. Um, it's kind of tragic how little that we have. Uh, no, 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 I wanna shop with you, sorry. You wanna buy brick wine and I've got brick wine. There you go, buy all of it, done. See you around. Same thing, we'll, we'll, we'll take the brick wine and the homemade beer off and, and then press favorites again to save it. So here's the thing, here's the pickle that part of the RNG can throw you this way, is that what we're likely gonna set up, if we go home, we're likely going to build a business that produces uh, whatever it is, this backroom cider, right? Because we already produce apple juice with the front 
and we will have the skill knowledge as well. Like there would be certain ones here that we just don't actually have the knowledge to do. You have to unlock the skill and yet we don't have anyone that's willing to buy it yet. So that's problematic. Um, and what, what you can do from there is just continue to explore or you can attempt to try and level people up and get to know them a bit better. I think exploring is probably the move, to be honest. So we're going to do that. And then driving into unknown areas uses up a bucket load of movement points. There you go, there goes our action point. But we're also waiting for our territory to expand as well, so we're just going to... Oh, here we go, perfect. That's exactly what we want. Um, because that now that's a mission... Um, but what I want is the hand thing. Okay, what's happened here? New corner acknowledges that you're in charge. Cool. So we're going to have to deal with that as well. So let's, let's actually just really quickly talk to this bloke first. Right, I'm listening. This is the mission that he's offering. And there's all sorts of crazy different ones. Uh, we come to this country and they ban alcohol. Um, also if we're back home, I could make it as much as I want. Right? This is a... I think this is a gimme mission, right? Once you have five corners, come back and talk to this dude. He'll give you something free, basically, right? But what I'm mostly interested in is, do you know who's buying what I'm selling, right? And he reckons this bloody clothes shop is. There we go. Hallelujah. Hard cider. That's what we want. Okay. So here's our corner here with the little envelope. So we're going to go there. They've also got a mission for us. So let's take the mission. Um, deliver 10 hard cider. Well, look at that. I've got that for you in my car right now. Or maybe I don't actually. I think I was one short just then. So let's just fill up here on what we've got. Um, things you're waiting for. Yeah, I was one short. Now, they'll give me a skill here, right? Brick wine production, homebrew production, moonshine manufacture, or I could just take an object. I'd rather not. I'll take brick wine production. That seems pretty cool. So now we have the ability. It's not going to help us that much here, but we now have the ability to build, you know, make ultimate uh, alcohol types. Um, okay. How's the front doing? And essentially we'll come by and we'll collect whatever money they've gotten from extortion to this point, minus their fees. And what we want to do is, how is the front doing? Uh, but we've run out of action points. So we'll just skip the turn. How's the front doing? Let's talk about locals. Rinse and repeat. He's now going to work on that corner. Give him 15 bucks. Give him some time. Off he goes. So, and he, that front will only be able to expand territory adjacent. He's in a not bad spot. Oh, actually, I think after that one, he might be locked in. And the game will tell you. He'll go, hey, you can't expand from this front anymore. And we'll have to set up a new front. So this is how you expand territory. I'm going into it a fair bit because, well, it's a it's a fuck around. Like it's a it's um it's poorly explained. Anyway, let's go sell some booze to this dude. I want to sell cider. Eight crocs sounds good. And then their their happiness goes up. It pushes their favor system up. It's all good. What's here? Oh, I'm out of action points. One of your crew members has gained a level. There we go. So we click here. You can make him better at fighting, or driving, or action points. We want more action points for the moment. Okay, cool. Um, and mostly we'll just wait for the moment. Uh, I don't know anyone else that's buying my cider. So I'm happy to just sort of keep exploring. And hopefully we can turn up a, uh, a favor or something like that. Oh, here we go. Now this means my front's short on money. So we go back there and address it. We'll, we'll give them some money because whatever, they came up short. They're funding all this vandalism. They're not making enough from extortion. We need to pay them to cover it. Now, actually, we had uh, one of the corners join, which is this corner here. You can, you can see, you get the hang of it. You'll start to see it. And you can see now that this one business, this cold storage is extortable now. So this is the rhythm. Expand your territory, extort. Grease palms, extend more territory, make people happy, and then obviously trying to sell stuff for profit in the background. Um, here we go. She's at 33, so I think we're pretty good. 
So we're just going to bloody lay it on. It's extortion. I have no choice. Now, the thing is, I think the cops will come down on this corner in a few turns. Like, she might be dobbing a little bit. Like, she's going with it, but she calls trouble in. You've got to be careful. When the, when the cops come down, there is a heat generator I don't really look at much. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. Stay away from that, because if you happen to occupy a square when, um, when they do they will lock you up and they'll just confiscate everything on your person. And for example, our dude right now, I'm carrying all of our money and pretty much all of our goods as well. So like we should deposit that. Um, we'll take the cider though, because fuck it, we need to make money, don't we? All right, so right now, we'll give that a little while for their demand to come back up, all right? We might as well just go explore. Just constantly keep an eye out. You see if there's any connections that know that are buying what we're selling. Um, I, I, the UI, like, I don't know, all these pop-ups, they're cute, they're nice. I Part of me wants to say that it's, it's too cluttered, but then another part of me is like, I don't know how you would do it not this cluttered, if that makes sense. One of your friends is ready to expand. Okay, so we brought a new corner in. You can see there we're at three corners. We can only have one manpower, which is me. And uh, as our territory size, it'll go up and, and our vehicle allotment. Something as well that this is going to be a problem if we don't uh, discover something is there's no auto shops. Here, you could probably repair your car because your car gets worn down. But um, if you go here and go... Oh, I could have sworn there was a... Uh car shops right oh here you go titanic auto emporium my bad there's one right there so that's good so you can get throttled by the rng by not having uh like a car shop nearby um new corner joined your territory your respect is rising cool this is the gambling thing as well so essentially you can talk to setting up a gambling operation which like i said is part of this dlc um however it's not super early game stuff, to be honest. It's very expensive. Um, for the moment, we're worried more about getting the cider operation up and running. Um, anyway, where'd the territory expand to? It looks like it's this corner here. So let's first go back to them. The little hat means I could buy a skill, like brick ma brick cider making or whatever the fuck. Except that'll cost me like a thousand bucks. It's not cheap buying skills. We don't need them either. How's the front doing? Let's expand some more. Need eight bucks, except I put all my money in my bloody under my mattress. Um, a part of this reminds me of the sort of I don't know. They were sort of like really early, not clicker games, but ones we you know like drug wars or something like that. This is when I was in high school, back in like O two or whatever. People would put them on the bloody Texas Instruments. And we'd move around to location to location. And it was sort of, it's sort of board gamey in a way. Like you can see in my equipment, my dude has a baseball bat and you can have fights with dudes on squares. You can die. If you die, it's game over. And then you can heal up at your houses, but you can, you can talk to your contacts, contacts one like better guns and all that, depending on your size of your organization. Um, how's the expansion coming here? We sorted that out. So here we go. We'll go over here. Unfortunately, no territory in this corner. Terrible. Terrible, terrible. But that's okay. He's still expanding whatever the next one over, I think it must be. Um, I'm going to go talk... I want to go talk to the Auto Emporium. Just go... I'm curious, actually. Because I don't think I've seen that before. Heard you've got a car or two for sale. Four-door sedan. A bit more cargo space. Yeah, it's usually... Mine's a two-door, but you can also get trucks... Truck capacity is based on skills and available parking. Yeah, so I don't know how you go with buying trucks. I'm, that, that I haven't quite figured out because it's kind of something I really want, to be honest. Um, uh, okay, cool. So let's see. We've still only got you to sell to, but it's been a bit of a cycle, so we'll do that. 
Um, what is it? Hard cider. There you go. Seven crocs for you, sir. We've got 600 bucks total, and I think we probably want around about 800 to set up cider production. So we'll just keep going. So you can see, look, I'm totally self-aware. I understand that this could be the most mind-numbingly tedious and not gangster-like thing from a certain perspective. For me personally, I kind of dig this. I kind of love it, actually. Um, it's it's part it's part of the gangster experience, uh, as far as you know. I'm sort of concerned, you know. Let's go back here. God damn it! Oh no! Oh, we met one of the bloody opposition. We'll see how savage this Sheila is. She might just start coming over here and punching me in the head, which you know wouldn't be the first woman to do that. Um. One of your fronts is ready to expand. So, these bloody terrible streets. Like, a part of it is cool, the RNG, but look at this. Where does this street terminate? So there's no shortcut around here. Oh my goodness. So as the game gets bigger, like, your transportation becomes a serious thing. And if you do have a dude on a truck route and you're sending him big, like, you're going to want him to have big move speed on his actions as well. Anyway. You can see here, respects rising, gain control. New corner in your territory. Well, there you go. It hasn't given me a warning against my territory. So presumably this can expand a little bit more. Let's see. Let's get our collect... Oh, four dollars. Look out, boys. I'm breaking the bank. Um, there we go. We'll extend... He's expanding over here as well. Oh, I guess down this street. Yeah, okay, sure. Um, so this is the territory... This is the corner that just joined us here. Hey, look at this. New victim. 20. All right. Okay. Not great. What you can do, there's two things you can do. I'll show them both. What are you selling? He's selling bottles and he's selling small bottles. I'll tell you what, I'll buy a bottle. And I find that it'll, that might give us like a five boost or something. Oh, look at that. Even better. Not enough action points. All right. We'll just let this save. I don't know what's going on here. Taking a moment to write. Um, what else you got? Small bottles. All right, I'll buy a... Fucking come back, game. Small bottles. I'll buy one of those too, please. There you go. Look at that. So he's, he's starting to really like all that. But what you can do is go, all right, who are your friends that I know? And we can see... Here you go. There's a mutual connection of our... Oh, well, well even there as well. One Tina. Oh, yeah, we remember her. So apparently they're friends, and Wantina owes me a favor. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go over to Wantina. That's not you, it's you. Oh, that's right, you'll cross at me for uh, extorting. See, the extortion resentment wears off. They get used to it. So I'll go, hey, can you introduce me to, to bloody, whatever the fuck his name was? Was that him? Was that him? That can't be, oh no, 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 it was, it was. I was, I was surprised that he was so happy. Uh, just because, but that's because I bought all these bottles. Willie Haynes, right? Bang. Put in a good word for me. Nice. We'll go back down. Look at this. Big boost as well. I think you can only have one mutual boost, and that wears off. You can see 20. So if I want to go and bloody extort this bloke, he's going to love it. You know you can count on me in time of need. Oh, that's a lie. He's not going to love it. He's actually going to resent it, but he's going to be polite about it. Um, he also has a unique, this one, the money one, I've noticed, which he basically will offer you a, a, a flat cash injection, um, to be, you know, redeemed later on, I suppose, but hey, I'll take it, sure. I'm not sure if it's in the base, that, that actually feels like that might be part of the expansion, because when I was playing on the Chicago map, I didn't really get people doing that, but now we've got a shitload of money. Um, all right, we've got to finish this video up, so I'll just show you real quickly. What you do is you dump all your money in, or whatever. You, I'm going to dump all my money in random bottles I bought to, to make people happy, right? Now we go create new operation. We're going to make backroom cider, which requires stoneware crocs. We're going to have to buy them ourselves, but we're also producing apple juice in the front anyway. Costs us lumber and money. We build. It's going to take time. So then what would actually happen? I'll just cl click on it briefly, even though we're not really... Well, you, I guess you could set it up with your main character. Sure. 
But you add these steps, you pl you know, play, stop. So this is, this is programming, basically. This is low level code programming, right? You would go, all right, let's say storage pickup. And then you'd go Apple, well, I don't know if we even, here you go, hard cider. Pick up hard cider from Simon's, right? And then what you can do is uh, you could just end this step, but if you go save this step and add one, right? It, it repopulates again. So then what you could probably go is go sell resources, hard cider. It's smart enough to know who will buy them at least, right? So you can go add one. But if you had 10 different customers, which it's going to get that way, you go add one, bang. You can just change that on the pull down. So it's actually overwhelming at first blush, but incredibly intuitive in the end, right? And then what you'd probably do is go... Um, You'd go storage drop off and then you'd go cash, right? And then maybe you want to add in also because you don't have a lot of dudes on your payroll, uh, buy resources, um, what was it called? Stone, stone crocs or whatever, stoneware crocs, right? However, it looks like we don't know anyone that's selling them. So that's a bit of a problem there anyway. Anyway, so in the end you'd go, all right, finish. Let's get rid of that step. There you go, you got your little loop, you'd assign the driver and car, and then you go start delivery, and then off you go. And so after all that manually moving around doing it yourself, you can finally bankroll a bloke to cover it for you. It's pretty satisfying, but like I said, it's going to be for a specific type of gamer. And I know a lot of people that follow this channel for, uh, you know, are boring like me, no offense, but you know it's from a place of love that you probably like these logistics typed transportation games. And at first blush, it might not be clear that that's exactly what this is. It's a great game. I think it's a real lot of fun, but again, I, I could see people going into this and definitely not getting what they are expecting, right? This isn't Mafia. This isn't a narrative shooter or anything like that. It's far from it. But for what it actually is, it's so good. Anyway, I wanted to look at this. I mentioned the DLC because like I said, that just came out as well. Obviously, you can only go so deep in 30 minutes, and I'm only so versed in this game, so hopefully I've answered the question of whether this is something you'd be interested in and put it on your radar and let you know that the developers are still supporting it with ongoing DLC as well. Anyway, that's enough from me. Team, thanks again for joining me. I might just leave it there for the time being, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.